Hello, good evening. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, as temperatures dip to freezing, churches across the East Midlands are preparing to set up winter shelters for people sleeping rough. Some charities are expecting a big rise in demand this year. But they're striving to provide more than just food and temporary shelter. That's just the start of a process to help homeless people get accommodation, followed by training and ultimately jobs. Our social affairs correspondent Jeremy Ball reports. Jake spends two days a week volunteering here at the Crocus Cafe in Lenton. Yeah, definitely. It's part of a catering course that's been organised by Nottinghamshire County Council's Skills for Employment team. They stepped in when he ended up on the streets after falling out with his family. This is the sort of place where I would stay, at the back of shops, park benches. This is a good place to see because it's out of the way of the public. My clothes were wet from the snow and no one cared about you. You was invisible to the public. You don't know where your next meal is going to come from. You don't know when you're going to have a bath or a shower. You don't know are you just going to freeze overnight with pneumonia and die. It's, it's a really scary situation. That's why this emergency shelter was set up here in Lenton last winter, one of several church halls across the East Midlands that welcomed people who were sleeping rough, with a bed for the night, food and drink, and help to get their lives back on track. Now those charities are appealing for volunteers and funds to run more emergency shelters this winter. Changes to the benefit system have made life very difficult, have set up a whole lot of new challenges. I think we all know there's a lack of a appropriate, affordable accommodation um, for a whole range of people. Increasingly, those people are East Europeans, like the Polish man who was living under this car park ramp, migrant workers who get laid off before they've earned the right to claim benefits or housing. Miroslav's from Slovakia. He's been sleeping rough since losing his job in Nottingham. I'm trying to start again. I'm trying to, to think positively about um, that things. And sometimes it's better not thinking about Christmas time, for example. But for Jake, things are looking up. He's been reunited with his family and his life's improved dramatically since he was sleeping rough. Really different. Now I've got like a, my own independent living. I've got my own flat. I've got my own heating. <laughs> I've got my own kitchen, so it's just absolutely brilliant. Now Jake's aiming to get onto a catering and management course at university, and eventually he hopes he'll have a restaurant of his own. Oh, let's hope so, eh? Well, Jeremy mm. obviously is with us in the studio. I mean, how big a problem is rough sleeping? Well, the figures, Anne, have been falling in recent years. The last official count showed around 200 people sleeping rough across the East Midlands, almost a quarter of those in the city of Derby. Homelessness charities, though, say that probably doesn't show the real scale of the problem. Two reasons for that. Firstly, it's just a snapshot on a single night. And secondly, of course, a lot of these people are hidden away. They're in woodland, they're in garden sheds, even in rubbish bins. So um, what's being done to tackle this? Well, the real priority is getting people off the streets. And across uh, a lot of the East Midlands, there are outreach workers who go out searching for rough sleepers at night. In fact, in Nottingham, they've taken more than 100 people off the streets just in the last three months. The real problem they've got is there's this sort of cycle. As soon as they take someone off the streets, there's somebody else who comes in and takes their place. So talk about these emergency shelters. Where will they be? Well, they're mainly going to be in churches. We're told there'll be 35 beds in Derby, another 22 in Nottingham, another 10 in Mansfield. Uh, in Leicester, we're still waiting to hear what's going to happen. Across the region, though, frontline workers are telling us that demand appears to be increasing. Mm. 